Uh, well, welcome into this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to talk about some hidden features of Photoshop today. Photoshop is incredibly feature rich. It's been around for a long time. And maybe you've even used Photoshop for 10 or 15 years, but you probably aren't going to know all these different features. Maybe you do. And if you do, leave a comment below. We're going to rip the mask back, tear this thing open. And I'm going to show you 28 of my favorite hidden features within Photoshop uh, that I love. Some of these now I use on a daily basis. Some of them I use just a few times a year. But... I love all these things. So first and foremost, we have the design space preview. So command or control K to open up your preferences and go down to technology previews and tick on enable design space preview. You can hit OK and then go window and choose design space preview. And sure enough, check this out. It's like a totally new version of Photoshop. It's very simplified. Um, it's very much made for a graphic designer and a layout designer. Some Somebody who's going to use this version of Photoshop might be somebody who's used to using a, a, an application like Sketch. Not that it can quite do the kind of thing Sketch can do, but you can see Photoshop's really beginning to move in this direction uh, of simplifying everything. All the menus and toolbars and everything are very simplified. Uh, but you can just play around with it and check it out, drag stuff around, and I mean, all your alignment options are there. You've got all, all kinds of stuff. Um, and it's just very, very simplified window, return to standard Photoshop, and you're out of the design space preview. Let's jump over here to the Layers panel. In fact, I'll drag it out to the middle of the screen. You can go to the Flyout menu in the top right corner of the Layers panel and choose Panel Options. Now, inside of here, we've got some cool options, thumbnail size, things like that. We also have these three features. I usually keep them all checked on. The first one, use default masks on fill layers. Basically, anything under Layer, Fill Layer here. Uh, that would be the Fill Layers, Gradient Fill Layers, and Pattern Fill Layers. If you shut that off, obviously, you're just not going to get a mask on those layers. Expand new effects. This has to do with layer styles. So typically, when you create or add a layer style to a layer, something kind of annoying happens, actually. Let me show you. So I create this new layer, and let's just throw, I don't know, a bevel and emboss or something on it. When I finish with it, I have this drop-down menu here in my layer, and almost always, inevitably, I hit the little up arrow just to hide that. Well, if I change in my panel options, I shut that off. Basically, the layer styles, when I finish with them, they're just going to be all collapsed within the layer like that. I tend to uh, prefer that, but for some reason, I always keep this checked on. And then add copy to copy layers and groups. That's really just a matter of housekeeping. If we, uh, well, we can shut that off and hit OK. And if we duplicate this layer, Command or Control J, we just get an exact replica, whereas normally this would say layer one copy if we had uh, that option ticked on. So when you're using the pen tool, typically, of course, you're drawing around an object or along a line or something in a photo. Right here, I'm just following this top curve to this skateboard ramp here in this park. Well, there's a really cool feature of the pen tool. If you look to the control bar and select that little cog icon and turn on rubber band, it's going to allow me to see where the path is going before I even drop an anchor point so I can choose the best possible place as far as I know to place an anchor point to get you know the best, most natural curve or whatever it is that I'm looking uh, to achieve with the pen tool. So don't forget the rubber band option of the pen tool. So when you're working with a Photoshop document and you've got some skin tone that you want to select, there's a quick and dirty trick. Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it's absolute garbage, but it's under select color range. You can select skin tones straight up from your photo. So it's just here in this drop down menu where normally it would be sampled colors. You can say, hey, no, find the skin tones here in my image. And you've got your fuzziness slider to help grab more or less of those skin tones. You can hit OK. And you can see with this image, it's... It's kind of hit or miss. It's not really all that great. Not, not Certainly not usable. Uh, but just know you have that option there under select color range. And sometimes it works really, really well. Sometimes, as you can see here, not so well. So one of the hidden features in Photoshop that I use maybe more than any other feature is the ability to rotate the clone stamp tool. This sounds like it's no big deal. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to zoom in here on this guy's shoulder. I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool. And let's say, I'm going to up the opacity, just set everything normal. Let's say we need to select or sample from his shoulder down here and paint up here. In fact, I'm going to make my brush a little bit harder. You can see that if we do that, we're getting the same curvature that his shoulder has way down here, and it's not following his shoulder that wraps around up by the base of his neck. Well, how do we change that? Well, we go Window, Clone Source, number one, and we have an option here in Clone Source to affect the rotation of our clone. So we're going to crank this way up to like, I don't know, 26, 27. We're going to go up pretty high. Let's go ahead and resample down here, and now you can see 
we have a, a, a clone that's going to be laid down that's way closer to following the curvature of the shoulder. Now, in between clones, you're going to have to adjust the rotation maybe a little bit more and more and more to really get the curve as it moves around his shoulder. But it's a really great tool to know that you can go in, you can sample something that's almost completely straight up and down and rotate it using the rotation options here in the clone source to match just about anywhere along a curve that you might need to clone along. Once you're done rotating, you can just hit this little flip over reset arrow and it takes rotation back to zero and you're back to cloning just like you normally would be in Photoshop. So clone source, the clone source panel I should say, the rotation options, very, very important. In Photoshop, you're going to work with text rather frequently, depending on what you're using Photoshop for. We've got this block of text here. We would double click on the layer thumbnail here to activate the text layer, allow us to edit it. But once we're finished editing, actually, let's just take this block of text and center align it, right? Instead of having to move over and commit the change by hunting down and hitting the little check icon, half the time you end up hitting the cancel out icon and you undo the changes you made, you can use the hotkey command return that would be control enter on the PC to quickly commit whatever text changes you need you make when you're editing text in Photoshop. That's command enter, control enter on the PC. Well, here's a great and fairly hidden tip about the pen tool. Let's zoom in here on her jacket lapel and we're going to grab the pen tool and we start here and we click and we place a point at the corner. I'm going to just hold down my space bar to grab the hand tool. I'm going to click and place there, maybe add a little uh, curvature to it. Uh, I'm going to suck that tangent handle back in. Now, let's say I place a point right up here, but it's not quite where I want it to be. Before I let go with the pen tool, I can hold down the space bar and I can move my anchor point wherever I like to get the exact positioning that I want. Boom, I can let go of it and then I can continue drawing my path whichever way I need my path to go. Another pretty cool feature in Photoshop is the ability to copy merged layers, but you don't actually need the layers to be merged. See, I've got this background layer and all these stars circling around her. Well, what I can do is I can make a selection above, you know, just a chunk of this, something like this, like we're cutting this rectangle out of the middle and go edit, copy merged, and then create a new Photoshop document, go you know, File New, and say, yeah, that's, that's a good size, and then com Command or Control V to paste in, and you can see it has automatically merged all of those layers together just in that little bit and allowed me to copy that whole chunk of information. We still have all the layers here in our original document, but using Copy Merged allows you to quickly merge them together just for the little bit that you're going to cop uh, that you're going to copy and transfer to a new document or another part of the document you're working in uh, right then and there. A neat little feature. Now, if you're used to working on huge PSDs, files that are just very large, not just in terms of the pixel size, but actual file size, maybe one, two, or more gigabytes, you can open a PSD to get a quick preview of it, or maybe you just need to export out a JPEG really quickly. You can open a flattened PSD by holding down the Shift and Option keys, that'd be Shift and Alt on the PC, select the file, and then hit the open button and Photoshop's going to say, hey, read the composite data instead. Yes, that's what I want to do. And it's going to quickly shoot through reading the Photoshop format. And it's going to present me, as you're going to see here in a second, with a flattened Photoshop document instead of having all the layers and all of that additional information that I would need to wait in order for it to load into Photoshop. Photoshop also has a very useful little tip when it comes to working with pixels on layers. And it's the ability to lock transparent pixels on a layer. Let's shut everything off here. I have the water and the sky separated in this image, so I've just got water here. You can see behind the water, it's transparency. There's nothing else on that layer. I'm going to hit the little lock transparent, transparent pixels on that layer. It's going to lock them up, and then I can do something like grab the brush tool, right? And I can just paint over the water. I can paint out over the transparent pixels all day, but I get nothing. Only when I paint over the water is something changed. This becomes important when maybe a client or somebody you're working on a project and they just give you a pixel based raster logo and you want to quickly change the color or maybe make changes to the logo well you can drag the logo into Photoshop this is a quick and dirty way to do this lock the transparent pixels maybe we want to change the color to like this this brownish sand color of the the side of that little cliff there cliff I'm using that that term very broadly but because the transparent pixels are locked on this layer all we need to do is hit option delete that'd be alt backspace on the PC and the entire layer is filled with that brown color except it isn't because the transparent pixels on this the beaches life layer are they aren't touched because there's no pixels there it's just transparency only the actual pixels are affected by the color that you filled into that layer so lock transparent pixels on any layer in Photoshop very useful and a really neat little tip to have in your back pocket when you need it
If you've never used the blend if sliders in Photoshop, you're in for a treat because this is a really cool way to blend images together. You can do a lot of really interesting and really artistic things, but it can also be just generally useful to know that this feature exists in Photoshop. You go layer, layer style, blending options. Now this is also available, you can just straight up double click on the layer and you get the normal layer style dialog box. But under the blending options portion of this, we have two of these sliders, blend if. Now I like to leave it set on gray. I don't really mess around with the color channels all that often, and we're just going to stick to gray uh, for the uh, for the length of this little bit. So we have this layer and underlying layer uh, options. Now you can uh, this layer basically is going to when I drag it, it's going to get rid of pixels on this layer that are darker than the pixels on the layer below. And we actually kind of get an interesting looking effect. We can also drag the whites back so we get rid of anything that's brighter. And you can see very quickly we've just cut away the bulk of that background. Here's another thing you can do. Hold down the Alt or Option key and you can click on one of those points and split. Oh, let me try that again. Let me drag this back to where it was. Alt or Option and you can split the slider to further sort of perfect your blended edge. You can really fine tune it. Now with the underlying layer, you can see basically it's going to allow the underlying layer where it's darker to begin to show through uh, or vice versa where it's brighter to begin to show through as well. So you can play around with these sliders. There's a lot of really interesting, thing, interesting things you can do and always remember you can split a slider to get a much more subtle and uh, sort of fine effect. So dial it in or, or bring, bring the effect about to where it needs to be with the big slider and then split the slider using the Alt or Option key and fine tune for the final effect. The blend if sliders in the layer styles panel in Photoshop must know information, super helpful and a great little tool that you can add to your Photoshop toolbox. So we all know and we all love layer styles in Photoshop, well at least most of us do. Those of us who haven't overused them tend to appreciate them when other people use them as well. We've got some text here, it isn't pretty, but it's there. We've got a stroke, a gradient overlay, and a drop shadow. Now all of these are still live layer effects. Check this out. You can actually convert these to real pixel layers that you can then go and edit. Now they won't remain live editable effects if we do something like add a hyphen in here, but it does afford you some other editing opportunities and there may be a time when you need to do this. So you select the text layer or any layer that you've applied layer styles to and go layer, layer style, create layers. You're going to see, it's going to say, hey look, some, some effects just can't be reproduced with layers. That's fine, I know. And we have a gradient layer which is clipped to our text layer and we have our outer stroke and we also have the drop shadow. This is kind of interesting because we can get rid of the text and the gradient and just have this neat orange outlined text which is a little bit bolder than the text that's in the middle there. So there's all kinds of cool things you can do. Mess around with it and you never know when you're going to have to use this. Layer, layer style, create layer. Did you know that when you add a drop shadow to an object here in Photoshop, you can go ahead and edit where that drop shadow sits, not just by the distance and size sliders and the angles, the angle uh, adjuster as well in Photoshop. We're going to shut off global light here for a minute. I'm going to increase the distance quite a bit uh, and also maybe increase the size and even jack up the opacity of my drop shadow here. I'm going to set my angle to about 90 degrees so it's going straight down for my text. But let's say I can't quite get everything exactly how I want it. You can just move outside of the layer styles box and you have this move uh, move tool. You can click and drag that drop shadow wherever you want it to go. So you can make it, you know, nestle it right up beneath the text or you can move it way far away from the text and everything is going to automatically update here in the layer styles dialog box. One of the cooler little hidden features of Photoshop is something called the bird's eye view. It's super easy. All you have to do is when you're zoomed way in on your document, hold down the letter H and then click and drag and Photoshop is going to temporarily zoom out and give you this box and you can choose which portion of the image you want to zoom into and then let go of the letter H and boom, you zoom right back into some other part of the image. Pretty cool. Bird's eye view. So I've got some ugly, hideous texture that I've applied a very sharp, harsh black to white gradient to and I've also thrown a little drop shadow beneath it. And let's say for some weird reason you think this is a great looking piece of type and you want to add it to a web project you're working on. Well, you can simply right click on that layer and choose Copy CSS. Well, this is, goes for many, many different types of layers in Photoshop now. Shape layers, all kinds of things. You can have gradients on them. You can have layer styles applied to them. Photoshop will do its best to interpolate that graphical look into CSS code. And then what you can do is, well, let's just drag out a new text box here. You can go ahead and just Command or Control V, paste that right in, and you can see here, if I commit this change, we have some CSS 
that's been written for us. It's given us a class automatically, a font size, font family, color, line height, uh, alignment options, text shadow, position absolute, and probably would do away with stuff like that. And then the left top and Z index would kind of fall by the wayside. It gives you quite a bit of CSS. And the more complex your layer is, it gives you all kinds of information in the CSS that's copied from any given layer. So check it out. You right click and you choose copy CSS. Yet another great feature of Photoshop is the ability to paste something into or outside of an object. So let's check this out. Uh, let's, we're going to go ahead and copy this entire image. So Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy. All right, and then I'm just going to deselect Command or Control D. I'm going to drag out a little uh, rectangle right about here. And I'm going to go Edit, Paste Special, and choose Paste Into. You're going to see... Nothing, it doesn't look like anything's changed because it's just pasted the entire image into this document. But you can see it has applied a mask. So if we go ahead on this layer and we hit Command or Control U to bring up hue saturation, we can, you know, radically change the color of this vulture. And then we can hit Command or Control T. We can size this thing down. You can see the mask is not linked to the layer, so the, la the mask is not going to change in size. You can just size this sucker down. And boom, we've pasted and gotten a mask which exactly corresponded with the selection that we drew out. So let's do this again. Let's um, let's drag a selection over the middle or closer to the middle of the document here. And this time we'll go edit, paste special, and paste outside of, or just paste outside. And you can see, basically it does the same exact thing, except it sh it's going to show the image. And I'm just going to quickly invert the image to show you exactly what it's doing. It's going to show the image everywhere except in the area that I've drawn a selection over. So it just shows the image outside of that, and it's created a mask to reflect that. So paste into and paste outside are two very cool little paste options that you have there under the edit menu. So if I'm zoomed way in on a Photoshop document and I'm, you know, painting or messing around with the document, this goes for any tool, this hotkey that I'm about to share. It's called a spring-loaded hotkey. If you hold down the space bar, it temporarily switches you to the hand tool, allows you to quickly navigate to wherever you need to go, and then when you stop pressing down the space bar key, it just swaps back to whatever tool you're using. In this case, I'm using the brush tool. So I've made some changes here to my Photoshop document since I first opened it. In this case, I wanted to make the image a little bit moodier, a little bit more like HBO drama looking. So I applied some uh, adjustment layers and things like that. But I've gotten to the point where I realized, you know what? The original image was better. There's a hotkey to revert your image to just how you initially opened it. And it's by just pressing the F12 key. You hit F12, boom, everything goes away. You're back to the image just as you opened it. So I've got some objects here in Photoshop that I've applied like an inner shadow and a bevel and emboss and a drop shadow to. If I double click, you can see, yeah, bevel and emboss, inner shadow. I've just done some things to them. Um, now, one of the things that I did, very importantly, might I add, is when I did this, and when I initially created the first drop shadow, I set it to 120 degrees, the angle of the drop shadow, and I ticked on Use Global Light. Then when I did Inner Shadow, I also ticked on Use Global Light, and it automatically set it to 120 degrees, and the same thing here for uh, Bevel and Emboss. I then copied that layer style to all of these dots here. Now, let's say we send this off to a client and they say, oh, that's great, but we actually want the white highlight to be over on the other side of these buttons or whatever they are. Um, we want the shadow to be up near the top and everything needs to be flipped around. Well, that means you have three layer styles on every single layer you need to go and adjust, except you don't. Why? Because you used global light. We can adjust the global light source and allow all the layer styles to automatically update by going layer, layer style, global light. You can see we have this little dialog box. We can, in fact, change the altitude and the angle of the light. In this case, we're only going to change the angle, and we're going to set it to, like, 40 degrees. I can hit OK, and you can see automatically everything changes. So if you use global light in Photoshop, you can only have one global light, so everything would be the same. But if you know it's a project where everything ne kind of needs to be the same, go ahead and set it to global light. If it needs to be adjusted later on, you can very quickly do it under layer style, global light. One of my favorite features in Photoshop, or one of my favorite little tips, I should say, is this one. Let's say I'm just, you know, drawing on this layer over this basketball, just sort of, you know, sketching around, having some fun with it. And I realize, you know what? I need the spot healing brush. Well, you can use what's called a spring-loaded hotkey. The hotkey for the spot healing brush is the letter J. So if I just hold down on the letter J, it's going to flip me to the spot healing brush. I'm still holding the letter J. I can paint, mess up a bunch of stuff with the spot healing brush, let go, and then I let go of the letter J, and it kicks me right back to the brush tool that I'd been using uh, before. So spring-loaded hotkeys, you can do them with just about any tool in Photoshop. I could hold down the letter P. I could go ahead and create an entire path. I'm still holding down the letter P. I can go ahead and uh, make sure I join that path here. Let's, let's try that again. 
There we go. And let go. And I still have my brush. Load that as a selection, right? I still have my brush tool. And I can just go ahead and paint right within that selection. So spring-loaded hotkeys, very useful and a great little tip uh, to have in your back pocket. So let's say we're painting in uh, this document and we want to just paint some blue around this kid's head here. We have an option to switch to what's called precise painting mode or precise painting cursor or something like that. If you hit the caps lock key, uh, you turn it on. So I hit caps lock key and you can see that I now just get sort of this crosshair, which I personally, I don't like it all that much, um, but there are times when it's definitely useful to have. It's not something that's my my go-to uh, feature, but it is something that's nice to know and nice to know that I hit caps lock again and I go back to my regular painting mode, hit caps lock again if I'm just sort of want to get as much out of the way as possible and just see exactly where the source of paint is coming from. Hit the caps lock key. It's a precise painting mode. There's a pretty cool tool hidden in Photoshop underneath the brush tool called the color replacement tool. Now I'm just going to run over this tool very, very quickly. I usually use the mode color or hue. Both of those tend to be the color changing modes. Hue will change just the hue of the color that you're painting over, whereas color will affect the hue and the saturation. I usually just leave it in the continuous sampling mode. I set the limits typically to contiguous and a tolerance of about 35 usually works for most images and most colors. I'm going over here on my swatches. And I'm to choose a light blue. It sets light blue as a foreground color. Now, I'm going to zoom in. I want to change the color of her dress from red to uh, blue. So, you can see the little dot in the middle of this brush tool. Wherever that dot, is, whatever color that dot is over, that is the color that this brush is going to replace. So, you can see here, I can paint and just go ahead and replace the color of the dress. You can see it, it sprayed a little bit on the grass, but that's probably just because uh, my tolerance is maybe a little bit too high. It should probably be more like uh, 25 instead of 35, but I'm not gonna, I'm not going to stop and change things now. You can see here, you can paint over. It's not exactly perfect, but very, very quickly, we start to sort of get this two-tone dress effect here uh, with her, and we're doing it very, very quickly uh, using the color replace tool. So it's not perfect, and it is destructive. So you're actually painting on the layer, not a new layer. In fact, if I create a new layer, you can see it's not going to do anything. Um, so you do have to paint on the layer, so you probably want to, you know, duplicate that layer. I'm Command or Control J, and that's the hotkey to duplicate the layer. But the color replacement tool. Now, very often when you're working in Photoshop, you're going to rely on the trusty eyedropper tool to select colors from within your image to use in different parts of the image or other images here in Photoshop. But what happens when there's a color outside of Photoshop that you want to sample? Take, for instance, here... Uh, Adobe Color CC, right? I've got this color scheme I pulled up. What if I want to use one of these colors? Well, I could screenshot and drag it into Photoshop. I could save it to the library. I could do any number of things to get this, but what if there's just a way I can use the eyedropper tool? And there is a way, by the way. You can make the Photoshop window a little bit smaller, right? And then you start by selecting a color in your document and just drag right off or outside of Photoshop over any color out here. Look, you can see we got that gray. If you check out our foreground color here, it's changing colors, right? We got that bright green. So just like that, we can select the bright green. Now you can do the same thing if you open up the color picker. What you need to do is start with the eyedropper out here and once again, just drag out away from Photoshop and you can get any color that you like. So that's a pretty cool little trick. Sampling colors outside of Photoshop. When you're painting with the brush tool in Photoshop, you're going to need to change your brush brush size and hardness, and you're probably going to need to change it pretty often. There's some hotkeys that help you do that, but we're going to focus on a different way of doing this. If you hold down Control and Option on the Mac and drag side to side, you can increase or decrease the size of your brush. Now, if you're on the PC, you need to hold down your Alt key and right click and drag side to side to change to change the brush size. Now, if you drag up or down, you change the softness or the hardness I should say of the brush so dragging down makes it a very hard brush dragging up makes it very soft you can also go to preferences command or control K choose cursors and change the actual brush preview color let's say we want to make it like a bright blue hit OK and if we do that again command alt or command option I should say you can see that our brush preview is blue so the heads up display brush size adjustment feature in Photoshop it's pretty cool check it out Photoshop is a pretty cool heads up color picker, heads up display color picker, I should say. You know, on the Mac, if you hold down Control Option Command and click, you can even let go of the hotkeys, and you have this color picker that appears on your screen for as long as you're pressing the mouse button down. Uh, on the PC, this would be Shift Alt and right click. Now, I should mention before I go any further, you do need to have OpenGL turned on in Photoshop's preferences in order to see this. But check this out. You can choose a color from the middle, or you may have a more traditional box with like a hue strip beside it. I'll show you how to get that in just a second. Let's say we decide we like this uh, color blue right here, but we want to pick a different hue. We like we like that brightness and saturation. Well, if we just 
move over to the hue slider, you can see our little picker in the middle goes right to the edge. You can lock the picker in place by holding down the spacebar key and moving to the hue slider on the outside, let go of the spacebar key, and then pick the hue that you want uh, for your color. So now I've got kind of this mustardy orange color, pretty cool. All right, now if we want to change the way that that heads up display color picker appears, go to your preferences, Command or Control K, and you have right here in general heads up color picker. You want hue wheel small, the hue strip, right? Hue strip large. Let's go with that and see what that looks like. You can see here it's just kind of a more traditional, you know, color picking uh, setup that it gives us. So there's all kinds of different options that you have. I tend to go with just the straight hue wheel or hue wheel medium. I like those two most. And uh, there you go. You can very quickly uh, select colors in Photoshop using this technique. And don't forget the space bar that allows you to lock your color picker in the middle right in place so you can get out to the hue selection strip. In any dialog box in Photoshop, you're going to make changes to your image, and sometimes you realize, I don't like these changes at all. But here in this curves dialog box, I've made an S-curve. I've gone ahead and edited things in the red, in the green, in the blue color channels. If I wanted to undo all of this, I could just cancel out and create a new curves adjustment. I don't want to do that. There's a hotkey. We can hold down the Alt or Option key, and it transforms the Cancel button into a Reset button, which gets the image back to the way it was with no changes made here in whatever dialog box you're working in. Here, this is just curves, but you can do this in stuff like liquify. You can do it in virtually any dialog box in Photoshop. Holding down the Alt or the Option key sets the Cancel button to Reset. Let's say you've gone through a Photoshop document and made a bunch of changes. You think you like the changes, but you want to see a quick preview, like a before and after kind of thing. You can do this with any layer in Photoshop. If you hold on the Alter Option key and click on the Layer Eyeball, you make every other layer disappear except that layer. So essentially here we're seeing this is the image as we initially opened it. Hold down the Alter Option key and click on that layer icon again and bring all the other layers back. So you can say, oh, that's okay, but I think I like the original image a lot more. Did you know that not only can you change blend modes in Photoshop by holding down the shift uh, the shift and alt key, that would be shift and option on the Mac, and hitting the plus and minus buttons to cycle through them very quickly, right? You see them moving right over here on my layers panel. Not only can you do that, but every individual uh, blend mode, with the exception of just a couple of them, has a specific hotkey. If you go shift, alt, or shift option on the Mac, and choose any one of these keys, like Shift Option O sets my layer to the blend mode of Overlay, or Shift Option U sets to the blend mode of Hue. So all these different things. Now you can download this blend mode chart over at tutvid.com. I'll have a link down in the description of this video. Blend modes, individual blend modes, have their own hotkey in Photoshop. Pretty cool. And that's going to pretty much bring us to the end of all of these tips in Photoshop, 28 of them in total. If you couldn't follow along with the video, you can check out the link down in the description, and you can go check out the full written article on tutvid.com. Share it with your friends, share it with your neighbors, share it with your relatives if you enjoyed it. Um, and if you've stuck around for the entire thing, thank you so much. I'm really glad that you uh, enjoyed it. And for this one, that's going to be it. So Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey, wait, stop. Before you click away from this video, I just want to remind you, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that little like button. It helps this video go up, and going up is what I like. That's what we want to do. If you also have a couple more seconds, go ahead and leave a comment. That's cool, too. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, check out either of these two videos right here for more of the stuff that I do. This hand is weird. Right there. Thanks, guys.